All right, the next two signal operations that we'll look at are what we call differencing. So we'll create signals by taking the difference of time adjacent samples and summation. So if you think of it in terms of things you're used to with continuous time signals, these are analogous to taking the derivative of a signal and taking the integral of a signal. But since we're working with discrete time signals, we, we call them different operations. We call them differencing and summation, but they are very much akin to differentiation and integration of continuous time signals. All right, so let's just work through an example, one for each of these operations. For differencing, we take a signal at time k and subtract off the value of the signal at the previous time, time k minus one. In doing this operation, we'll go ahead and store that off in this new signal, y of k. So let's just draw a picture here of an example, x of k. So x of k I've plotted here from time minus five to four. So outside of this, we assume it's zero. So it's zero all the way from minus infinity up to time minus five. And then from time four on, it's also equal to zero. But here in kind of the middle, so to speak, we have times where x of k is non-zero. And then we're actually going to perform this differencing operation and plot what y of k looks like. So the easiest way to do this is just time by time. So let's start off here at time minus five. So at time minus five, y at time minus five is equal to x at time minus five minus x at time minus six. So we need to come over here and look at these two values at minus five and minus six and subtract those. Well, they're both zero, zero minus zero is zero. So we get a zero here for y at time minus five. And then we do the same thing at time minus four. I need to look at these two values and subtract them. So two minus zero is two. So I get a two here for y. And then at the next time instant, I need to subtract these two values. A negative two minus two is negative four. So I get this value for negative four here at time minus three. And I just keep doing that. I keep grabbing pairs of, six, of values, subtracting them, grab a pair of values, subtract them all the way down the time axis. And if we keep doing that, we get a signal that looks like this. So what you can kind of see what happens here is when you have adjacent amplitudes that are very different, the difference of those signals is a very large value. When you have uh, values, adjacent values and amplitude that are kind of small, then the difference of those values is a small number. In fact, if we had values that were repeated, we don't have any in this signal, but let's say we had a value at time three that was the same value at time four, then the difference of those would be a zero, and then you would have a zero over here. So if you kind of think through it that way, we see that differencing is really kind of a high pass operation. Values in time that are very different from each other get accentuated, whereas values in time that are adjacent to each other that are very similar come through as zero. So a differencing operation is inherently a kind of a um, high pass filtering operation. It rejects low frequency content and allows high frequency content to come through. All right, let's do something similar now for summation. By definition of summation, what do we do? At time k, the signal we create is the sum of all values of the signal up until time k. So if I was to figure out what y of zero is equal to, I would need to add up an infinite number of values of the signal all the way up to and including time zero of the signal. Let's work with the uh, exact same signal we had just a second ago. Here is the signal we were just working with. But now instead of doing the differencing operation, we'll do the summation operation. So I'll go ahead and set up my axes down here for y of k. And again, we assume outside of this interval we have zeros. So for this point right here, if I want to know what y at time minus 5 is equal to, I need to add up all these values back here. Well, they're all zero. So 0 plus 0 plus 0 all the way up to and including this zero, we get a zero at time minus 5. So that's why I drew this zero right here. Well then, what about at time minus four? Again, we have to add up all these values, which are still zero, plus a two, and I end up with a value of two at time minus four. And then really this point now we can keep track of. This, this point represents the cumulative sum from minus infinity all the way up to time minus four of the signal x. So when we go to the next time, I really just need to take this value and add 
this value to figure out what is going on at time minus 3. So 2 plus a negative 2 gives me 0, which is why I plotted a 0 here. So then to figure out what's going on at time minus 2, I can take this value and add this value. 0 plus 1 gives me a 1. And then to figure out at time minus 1, I take this plus this. 1 plus a negative 1 gives me 0. And you just keep going that same way. So the way I just explained it, where you kind of use the last value you had and then add on the next one, that's the easiest way to do it because you don't have to sum up from minus infinity to k every time. The only thing you could run into is if you mess up one of these values early on, then you continue using that as you go, then you're going to be off as you continue to make your plot. So just be careful that you get those values right and uh, don't let that error propagate all the way down. So if we keep doing this, we uh, get these values here at time 3. Eventually we had a value of 4. And then what happens at time 4, I have a 0. So at this next instant of time, I'm going to take the sum from minus infinity up to time 3, which represents this value right here of 4. To figure out the next value, I add in a 0. So 4 plus 0 gives me 0. And then from here all the way to infinity, I'm still 0. So if I was to keep plotting y of k, I'm just going to keep having 0. So this value actually holds steady for forever. All right, so in terms of what type of an operation is this, you can kind of see what happens. Just graphically here, we have this signal that was kind of bouncing around. By summing, we have a signal now that doesn't wiggle around quite as much. And that kind of makes sense because what happens, say, right here is influenced by all the values that came before it. So even though you might add in a value, you can only move so much because the sum before you puts you essentially where you're at and you only get to deviate from where you're at just a little bit. So whereas differencing was very much a high pass operation that let noisy things through and rejected low frequency terms, summation is actually a low pass operation. It tends to result in smooth outputs and it rejects drastic changes. You can kind of picture if you were at a, a very large value and you had this signal that had one little blip or one discrete very large jump, the summation kind of smooths that out. So summation and integration are inherently low-pass filtering operations. All right, well, that's it for now. We've discussed differencing and summation. And the next video, we'll move on to kind of more interesting operations, I think, because we'll start working on time operations, time scaling, time shifting, time reversal, very different types of operations.